Hello and welcome to Bite Size Piano. In this video I'm going to show you five different ways to make a bit more of a simple chord progression into something that sounds more like a jazz chord progression. It's going to make it sound more colourful, more interesting and a little bit more sophisticated as well. You can pick and choose which ones you want to incorporate into your chord progressions to make them sound just a bit more interesting. We're gonna take a very simple chord progression, just taking the typical uh, one, four, five, six chords, the diatonic chords. If you don't know what they are, you need to go watch the video of the links below, which explains all of that in full detail. So A minor, G major, C major, F major. So that's the chord progression we're starting with. So basically this is what you call a reharmonization or a reharm. So taking a basic chord progression and adding things to it, changing it up a little bit. So the basic, very basic structure of the chord progression is the same, but it has all these more interesting elements to it as well. Let's go in and I will show you step by step how I'm gonna change that chord progression you just heard into something a lot more interesting. So we're gonna start off with the, you know, the most used diatonic chords in music. Picking the one, four, five, sixth chord from the C major scale. One, so A minor, I'm just playing fifths in my left hand. G major. C major and F major. So you'll probably notice that I'm playing all of those in root position. In five steps, we are going to turn this chord progression into this chord progression. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix up the inversions of those chords. Not changing any of the notes yet, but it will start to sound a little bit different as we add a new element. So instead, I'm going to play different inversions. So if you don't know what inversions are, again, you're going to have to watch the video that I've linked below, which explains all of that. Basically, it means just playing those notes in a different order. Still the same chord, it just gives different voices. So I'm going to play first inversion of A minor. So I'm playing octaves in the left hand. I'm going to move that down one to first inversion of G major. And then I will play second inversion of C major. And then let's just keep the root position of F major. So I'll do that again. It's been the top note. G be the top note, E be the top note, and then C be the top note. Those top voices may change, so we have a descending upper chord progression there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add what's called some upper extensions to those chords. So basically an upper extension means adding things such as ninths, elevenths and thirteenths, technically sevenths in there as well, stacked in thirds. For example, A minor is first, third, fifth note of the scale of A minor. I'll show you like that. If we go up a third, that gives you the seventh. Go up a third again, that gives you the ninth. If you go up a third again, that gives you the 11th. If you go up a third again, that gives you a 13th. So playing around with like ninths, 11ths and 13ths, which means it's the top notes of those chords, is gonna start adding more color and interest. I'm gonna add a ninth extension. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. This would be the ninth note, obviously, which is the next note up from an octave scale of A minor. So we have, and then I'm just going to move that down one, 
So some of these chords you might feel don't work. But we're gonna go with it. And then I'm gonna come down here. I wanna keep this the same. I'm gonna add um, an, a 13 in the F major chord. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, that gives us a D. So now we have, with the inversions and the upper extensions, not on all of them, but on most of them, we have this. So already it's starting to sound a bit more interesting, a bit more colourful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play or mostly play in sevenths in my left hand. So we're going to play instead of octaves. This might be better for some of you because it's obviously slightly less of a stretch. So we have A and G, move that down. Probably won't play in sevenths there because you can hear that sounds quite harsh, quite muddy. If you're going for a harsh sound, obviously that's fine, but I don't want to today. And then up here I'm going to play sevenths as well, so F and E. So now, adding all of that, we have... So already, again, even more colourful. So it's already sounding pretty jazzy. There's a couple of things I'm going to change. So the next thing is I'm going to add some sus2 or sus4 or add to add four notes. If you don't know what a sus2 chord is, let's take the chord of A minor for example. A, it, sus means suspended, so suspended second is where you remove the middle notes of the chord and you replace it with the, the second note of the scale. So instead of being the third note of the scale, it's the second note of the scale. A very popular sus chord and then the other one of that is a sus4. The same principle, but you add the four and get rid of the third instead. Add two and add four is where you add them as well as playing the third as well. So I really like the sound of add two and add four chords. It's only an add nine, add 11, add a 13 if it's the top voice of the chord. Otherwise it's an add two or an add four because they are the same note. So if, again, if we take the scale, the second note of A minor is a B, as is the ninth note. Obviously, it's an octave higher. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The Bs. So depending on whether it's an add two or an add nine, depends on where it sits within the chord. Same, obviously, principle for add fourths, the same for add elevenths. That's a D. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Also a D. Let's experiment with some sus2, sus4, add2, add4 chords. So again, I'm not going to add one to every single chord. <laughs> you don't have to add everything in there. You can pick and choose depending on what flavour you like the sound of. So here we have now this chord. It's an A minor 7, which is, would just be that. It's an inversion of that. And obviously we've added that ninth on there. So I'm not going to do anything to that. I quite like that. It's this next one that I'm not overly excited about. It's nice, but I don't think it... So what I'm going to do instead, something very simple. I think it's the B that I didn't like. So now we have a G7 sus4 add 9. Lovely long title. So again, if we take a G major chord, that's a G sus4. So we don't need the B. So we are playing, that's the G, that's the ninth part, one note up from G. And then we're playing the seventh part in the left hand. So it's a G7 sus4. Add nine. <laughs> so now we have. 
And the next chord was the C chord. So I'm gonna make this, instead of it just being a plain C chord, I'm gonna add the seventh in there, but not there, because again, I think it's too low and sounds too muddy. I'm gonna add it here instead. So I'm gonna swap the C for a B. And I'm gonna add a two, like that. So C major is this, add the second note is that. So that again, that chord is, so you get the C major seven out to two effect without it sounding too muddy. So, so far then we have The last chord was, at the moment, it's just an F major 7 add 13. So, so far then, we have... So there's one more main thing I'm going to do, which is to add a chromatic passing note slash chord, or just adding passing notes or melodic notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a chromatic passing chord between probably just two of the chords. And the one that makes sense is between the first two chords because we have an A type chord to a G chord. So the chromatic note in between there will be the G sharp. So what I'm going to do, so from the very first chord, so at A minor 7 add 9, I'm literally going to move everything down by a semitone, like that. So yeah, moving chromatically is a really jazzy, um, effective thing to do in jazz harmony. Into my G7 sus4 and 9 chord. <laughs> so we have then. We can add a couple of extra things in there. This is just the rhythm I'm playing in. So I'm going 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Four and one, two, three, four. So playing, so catching the chords on the and in the in between beats. So rhythmically, um, there are ways like that to make it sound more jazz-like as well. Is altering the rhythm, not just playing everything on the first beat of every bar or on the beat all the time. So we could add a couple of um, extra chords and extra notes in there as well. So like. I don't think we need to do anything to the first bit. You can add a staccato in there if you want. A G might be a single note there, a nice just single note to play to transition. And you can add repeat the B. You could play around with passing singular notes. Um, just whatever you like the sound of. Again, this video is just to give you tips and tricks and some inspiration. So yeah, I'll play the full thing again. You could do like a lead up. So I just, that's just an inversion of the A minor chord that we're about to play. that was useful and I hope that's inspired you to make your chord progressions a little bit more varied, more interesting, more colourful and um, yeah just have fun with harmony and there's definitely more you could do as well but they're just a few tips and tricks to get you started into exploring the beautiful wondrous world of jazz. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that and I look forward to seeing you in my next tutorial. Bye bye! So that's the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it and that it's useful. If you'd like to leave a piano tutorial request, you need to click on this video, which takes you through to my official request space. You do need to be subscribed, all requests are noted and considered, 
So I look forward to seeing you over there.